Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tag nine is listening beyond the sound bites. And today, it's a very exciting show. We are at the Community Kitchen Academy here in the Capstone Building in Barrie, Vermont, and we're with Chef Jamie Eisenberg. Chef? Hi. Thank you for being on Thanks the show. Thanks for coming. Here is an, uh, a resource in this city and in this state that I bet you don't know about, and I want to bring it to you because it's a very exciting program. Chef, could you tell us a little bit about the Community Kitchen Academy and I'd what it's all to. about? Sure. Uh, Community Kitchen Academy is a nonprofit uh, training program that provides uh, skills and hands-on experience to low-income, underemployed Vermonters to help them get a head start in the food service industry. Uh, we, we partner with the Vermont Food Bank. We're actually a Vermont Food Bank program, and we're partnering here with uh, Capstone Community Action. And um, the food that the students use to practice their skill sets on has been donated through the Vermont Food Bank, and all the food that we make here, thousands of pounds every session, three times a year we make up 5,000 pounds of food, gets donated where we actually get, distribute it right through our food shelf here to our neighborhood for people in need that need sus sustenance and extra food. That's great. Mm -hmm. we're, we're back. We took a little break because we were actually filming right in the kitchen, and the students um, are got their uh, assignments for the day, so we thought we'd move into the chef's office. So excuse my back while we continue the interview. So, sure. Chef, yes. um, could you tell us a little bit about your background? I've oh, known sure. you for years and yep. don't really know the background. Oh, sure. Well, I think we have a, a growing up in New Jersey in common. Yes, right? I remember that conversation. <laughs> so we have good food in our background. Exactly. Um, well, I um, actually was going to be an artist. So I went off uh, after high school. I went off to Rhode Island School of Design, and I uh, majored in printmaking there. And uh, just like most starving artists, I got a job working in a restaurant to make some cash. Yeah. And was started washing dishes. And before I knew it, I was the sous chef of the restaurant. I was still in school full time, and uh, when I graduated, I loved the lifestyle. I loved working in kitchens, and I stayed uh, stayed in that niche. A couple of years went by, and I said, "Well, if I better take this seriously." I went um, looking for what was next, and I saw an ad for New England Culinary Institute up here in Vermont, and I said, "Culinary school in Vermont sounded pretty good to me." So I I changed my career path and got uh, an associate's degree in culinary, and then um, actually worked for New England Culinary for almost 10 years as a chef instructor there oh, after nice. I graduated. And, um, and so that really set me on a path of instruction and, and working with students and teaching skill sets. And went back into the industry for several years after that. I opened City Market. I was oh, the prepared foods manager there. Wow, I, uh, yep, I opened the new you. store there. And um, after that, somehow I found a niche of um, opening up uh, uh, prepared foods departments in, in grocery stores, and I went on to help Healthy Living open up their new store as well. So I was the prepared foods manager there. Goodness. And then Community and Kitchen started, and I, I said, okay, I want to go back to teaching. And, very nice. Um, and then I wound up working in Burlington for four years when the, the program started there. So the size mm -hmm. of your classes are what, eight to ten uh, they students? They wind up to be that big, and that's similar to what Necky had for yeah. years. So. You know, we start with a group of maybe 14 students that enroll, mm -hmm. and you know, not everybody shows up the first day. People have life issues. So you know, life gets in the way. Life sometimes. gets in the way, yeah. and those the classes usually get down to about a graduating class of about eight average. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I I saw here on the on your website, which I would hope everybody would check out. You've mm -hmm. got several locations. Is that the kitchen locations mm -hmm. or the capstone locations? We have two locations for Community Kitchen Academy. Our original campus is in Bur uh, Burlington, yeah? and that's located at the Chittenden Emergency Food Shelf oh, there. Nice. And that agency is uh, CVOEO, Champlain Valley Office of Economic right. Opportunity. So that's who the food bank is partnering with there, and the location for the class is at the food shelf. Great. Here, the food bank is partnering with Capstone Community Action, and this is our second campus here in this building. Now, do you divide your time between the two, or you're here? No, in I'm here now. I spent four years in Burlington, yeah. and when this uh, opportunity came up, I jumped on it, and I uh, came over here, and it's it really helped create continuity between the campuses. And so we all meet, and we collaborate, and try to keep the programs uh, very similar in both campuses because we're an accredited program now we offer nine college credits wow. for 
uh, completion of all the assignments and um, along with our graduation certificate. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we keep the standards the same for both programs. What is your graduation rate? Is, uh, is it a high graduation uh, rate? We have lots of statistics and numbers. I, I don't know the number offhand, but I think our graduation rate is somewhere in 75%. Uh, That's great. Something like that. And our employment rate post-graduation right is now around 90%. Oh, congratulations. Um, which is That's terrific. And, and that includes um, people that are getting jobs, keeping jobs, and also um, going to further education Great. after that. Well, yeah. we're going to talk yeah. to uh, Susie Ford afterwards. And mm -hmm. she was a graduate of That's your right. previous course and is mm -hmm. now going to be working here, hopefully. Let's hope so. And so. she's also trying to start a business of her own. So oh, we're great. helping her to get her feet on the ground so that she can um, transition into her own uh, business after this. So. Now you were yeah. telling me that um, I was I was had the pleasure of coming here to, to a, I think yeah. a graduation test. Well it, it was, was one a of a plated, final project. It was a final project plated luncheon right. which right. was beyond <laughs> description. It was like a four star yeah. uh, restaurant. It, it was, was a good meal. it was spectacular. Yeah. And I I've been telling everybody yeah. the pride yes. that the students right. had when mm -hmm. they were explaining what they made to That's us. Right. It was mm -hmm. Uh, the chef had invited people from Barry City, and I was fortunate enough mm -hmm. to be working there yeah. and <laughs> raised my hand quick. Uh, uh, by the time I got to dessert, yeah, it was just—it was a little overwhelming. It, it was a bit much. I, I yeah. couldn't finish the yeah. dessert, which yeah. says a whole lot about. And it was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of fun you with told that. me now that you actually turned that event yep. into a fundraiser. That's right. Every session, we try to craft a fundraiser for the class. Um, the money can come back. We, we offer a luncheon of some kind, right. and uh, people that are invited um, pay, you know, good dollar amount to get. It's usually about a five-course meal, yes. and um, they have a theme. We've done Thai. We've done Chinese. We've done um, last session. We actually had it off campus at Grow Compost in uh, Moortown, and we did a Latin outdoor picnic. And we built our own um, wood grill uh, from stones on the land and used wood from the land and a pig from the land. And it oh was a farm-to-table event. And it was, uh, it was beautiful. And we How had live stations. How you get your name on the list? Uh, well, you know, I think we can work something card. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Food is my life, yeah. I must say. I follow the, the, the food channel faithfully. Sure. So yep. um, mm -hmm. anyway, I've got some stories about that. <laughs> so um, you, we just watched you this morning yep. giving your assignments yes. to the class. Mm -hmm. And I must say, it was a um, wasn't sure what the end result would be. Mm -hmm. It was quite a, a collection mm -hmm. of, of yep. assignments That's of food. Right. That's At right. the end of the day, does it come together yep. in mm -hmm. a? Yeah, we always do like a little tasting of the food that we have. You know, it's very important that the students try the food because yep. you know we're making it as it as for customers. I mean, right. these are people that come to the food shelf and they're not paying for the food, but they're still our customers. So right. we want to make sure that the food looks good, tastes good, it's well balanced, it's seasoned properly, all of those things, because when they leave here, they need to have that skill set to be able to evaluate the food. So they try everything, we take a little sampling, um, and uh, the kitchen, all of those assignments were uh, based on stations. So each one of the students had a station they were responsible for, and right. they have these stations for two days. So they were, we did it fairly quickly because they really understood what was going on. Um, somebody was working with the meat proteins. Someone was doing an a la carte plated meal. Somebody was doing starches and vegetables. Somebody right. was doing the baking, etc. And so they understood the nature of their station. So the second day, they rotate every two days. We really actually treat it like a professional kitchen. This is our production for the day. And some of these things are all going to come together onto a plated meal, and some are just going to go into bulk packaging. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about you've got a, a, a space here at Capstone that's right. that's li that acts as a food shelf. It is a food shelf. It's the second largest food shelf of the state. Oh, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, after oh, excellent. Burlington. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So people are free to come in, that's right. and, um, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll go yeah. check that out. And it's mm -hmm. food from here. It's food from and here, from plus donated food through the food bank and other Great. donors. Now yes. this, we were talking to the uh, Vermont Food Bank people yesterday, mm -hmm. and they said they pretty much set up this kitchen. Um, yes, that's right. Because they mm -hmm. used to do, I was at a gleaning mm -hmm. that's right. uh, volunteer mm -hmm. event there, and they said all of that kitchen came mm -hmm. here. That's right. When, that's when they started partnering with Capstone, they no longer needed the kitchen up on the hill at the food bank. So uh, all the kitchen equipment came down to this kitchen and were put into place here. So it was pretty much ready to go. They right. needed just to supplement a little bit. And we were able to also um, have the, sh the, the chef from the food bank 
come and work with us for the first two years here. He has now since moved on, but it was a great transition, just a great resource to be able to have all that equipment yeah. and set this kitchen what up. What a partnership. It really because, is. Because yeah. uh, we were talking yesterday yeah. that um, one out of four Vermonters are dealing with food insufficiency, that's right. That's right. which to me is mm -hmm. just appalling. I it think really that's is. the word. It's pretty shocking. Yeah. You know, we, um, we have full distribution here on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays where uh, the people that sign up for the, uh, to receive groceries from the food shelf um, can come and get a, an allotment of food. And there are some mornings when the lobby here is packed. Wow. Packed wow. with people. Um, and uh, it's, it's really something to see. It's like it really reminds you that, you know, um, we're pretty lucky to have what we need, and not everybody is, uh, has the resources. Well, and what I found, just I don't want to take away from our discussion yeah. about the community kitchen, but you can't tell what circumstances people are no. in. That's you right. think that there's mm -hmm. funding in the family and That's right. circumstances, whether it be a, a sickness of a child, That's which has right. uh, taken over the... Correct. The, the available resources right. and people need help and that's the mm -hmm. first place that people cut that's because right because you need mm -hmm. to pay your mortgage they you pay, need to pay. They heat the homes yeah. and everything and so this it. agency helps with all of those things that's great so this is one program among many yep. that are here to help people that have hardship with housing with heat with yeah. uh, weatherization with uh, food shelter all of these things we're really here to help out that's great and this program helps out with job training and food. They That's go right. together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so impressed with what yeah. Capstone does um, and what you're doing, obviously. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this side venture you have about <laughs> um, about pies. Oh, I my hear. gosh. And I hear they are spectacular. Well, Words it's, out. It, it's become more than just a side venture. I also have a small business. So yeah. um, I learned uh, some entrepreneurial skills years ago from another nonprofit, the Women's Small Business Program. And my partner and I uh, started a small bakery in Underhill, Vermont. And it's called Poor House Pies. Right. And um, we've been in operation for six years now, growing every year. Uh, we were just on a PBS documentary on Tuesday night called mm -hmm. A Few Good Pie Places that was produced by WQED in Pittsburgh. And um, our business actually has tripled since last oh, Tuesday. Really? How do you so keep up with this? It's tough. I get up in the morning at uh, quarter to five, and I start baking by about 5.30. I do a little bit of work at home before I come here. And then Having done I, your, uh, your planning for today. Exactly, right. And then I do this all day, and then I go home and make pie. <laughs> oh, bless so you. And they're all, girl. They're, uh, yeah. so it looks like there's a lot of fruit pies. Fruit pies, fruit pies and pies. cream pies. My right. partner does the fruit pies. I mostly do the cream pies. Okay. So uh, the big seller right now is key lime pie. So I made 12, uh, 12 key lime pies before I came to Good. work today. And where do you <laughs> sell them? Where are they available? We sell them right directly through our bakery. Uh, we actually have a, a shed in our yard that operates like a farm stand. And, and it's we'll a self-service, 23 yeah. Park Street in Underhill. Yeah. And um, it's a self-service uh, pie stand where there's money uh, in a bank. You leave your money and take a pie. And uh, you can have a pie, slice of pie right there at a table at our, our stand. And uh, we also have wholesale accounts in Burlington, um, uh, around town at some of the, the major stores, Sweet Clover Market, uh, City Market, uh, Healthy Living uh, Seasonally. Oh, nice. And we actually do product for Dober Tea downtown as well. Good so, for you. Yeah, busy, so we're pretty busy. busy lady. You're Very probably busy. exhausted. Food is my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how do people um, qualify to be sure. in this program? Well, they have to fill out an application, and the application is available here at Capstone uh, at, at the lobby, also online at um, feeding uh, the, the Vermont Food Bank's uh, website. Yeah. So, um, feeding Vermont. Oh, uh, we'll we'll yeah, say the well, website yeah, later. Yeah. Um, they fill out an application, it comes to me, and then I usually give people a call back and invite them to what we call an information session. It's like an open house, and I do them uh, probably half a dozen times uh, during the end of the session in between and recruit. And I lay out all the details of the program, and I do a presentation. We usually give out cookies and um, really fill it out so that people understand what the program's all about. Sometimes we have them come in and spend some time at the class so they can shadow it and see what the class is like. And then there's an interview. And um, we do an interview, a one-on-one -on -one interview. We do a background check on all of our students. And then uh, I build the next session class. And our next class will be beginning, I believe, in January, mid-January of next year. And do you help mm -hmm. people find jobs? Uh, do you do yes. a placement support for them Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. It's exactly what it is. It's placement support. We don't guarantee a job no, after graduation, right. but we do everything in our power to help them. We, you know, we prepare them by resume writing and cover letter 
interview skills, job well, search skills. Well, you've got skills. all the resources here in Capstone. Exactly. Right. We bring in um, resources from the Department of Labor. They do a presentation for us. So they're really well suited to know how to find a job. Last session, all of our students had jobs prior to graduation. Wow. So yeah, that was really big. And so um, most of the students will be able to find some employment af before or after graduation. Okay. I have employers calling us all the time. I need people. I need people. Can you send people to me? Right. And that's excellent because then we make the connection very easily. Well, my favorite yeah. chef, other yeah. than yourself, chef, <laughs> is Marcus Samuelson. Oh, really? Uh, and uh -huh. I follow him constantly. Uh -huh. I've even been to his, his restaurant in, in, the, uh, uh, in New York. Nice. And he had a book, Yes, Chef. <laughs> and how he explains what really yeah. happens um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a kitchen yep. is pretty mm -hmm. intimidating, I think. Sure. Is <laughs> how do you prepare your students for what it's really like well, in kitchens with a, yeah, with a serious sure. master well, chef? Well, I know that you're going to be speaking to students after this yeah, and interviewing them. them. <laughs> you should ask them that question <laughs> because it's exactly what we do. Um, that is how we speak to each other in our kitchen. Yes, chef. I say there's really two responses when I ask you or tell you to do something. I try to ask, yeah. um, yes, chef, or ask a question. Um, I, we don't really have time for a story. We don't have time for you. Well, I was going to, and then I, but it's like, no, no. Right. I just need to get it done. So we need to keep things pretty tight in the kitchen. We don't have time to you know, waste on extra storytelling. Right, right. So it is pretty cut and dry. And we, want, we do prepare these students for the professional communication style. Some chefs can be very gruff. They, they just want to keep moving on and maybe not to have the best communication skills. So yeah. there are days where I'm going to, you know, ramp it up a little bit for them right. and, and really act as if we're out there so in the real world. It sound, according to the book, I think it sounds good that you're, that you're <laughs> preparing them because it, could be a shock. it sounds pretty, I don't want to say cruel, but, but you well, obviously learn a lot and it's, uh, it's disciplined. It is disciplined. That's a better way to put yeah. it. And it can be very hierarchical, too. Yeah. Um, there are levels, and um, and you know what? Most people that stay in the food service are comfortable with those levels. Right. They actually, they're levels of support and training. And yeah. so, you know, if I was working with a, a great chef, I would, you know, basically, you know, do whatever they ask me to do because right. I'm going to learn so much exactly. from them. Exactly. Well, when you've yeah. got several thousand mm -hmm. people waiting outside the other door, That's right. you've got to serve, and each plate's got to be right. perfect. That's so. right, and our standards are very high. Yep. So the system actually works really well. Yeah, it does, it seemed to. I mean, obviously, Marcus has become right. very successful himself. Right. So you also mentioned before when you were talking uh, to the students about the 50th anniversary. You That's right. Had mm -hmm. some Yes. incredible number yeah. of pizzas that you're uh, <laughs> preparing. Right. Well, we're working on a menu for um, a 50th anniversary celebration here at Capstone Community Action. This agency has been in operation That's that amazing. long. And we're having a big event here on the 27th of September. The Community Kitchen Academy is going to be helping with that event. We, we haven't 100% decided on the menu yet, but it's likely we're going to be doing wood-fired pizzas and possibly uh, some cake as well. Right. So, but it's going to be 800 people, so we're, gonna, we're prepping up early. Wow. <laughs> and if yeah. uh, people get an invitation, if you haven't yeah. seen this building, it's, it's spectacular it's how the former executive director, Hal Cohen, mm -hmm. who's now Secretary of Human Services, right. um, put all of your people mm -hmm. together in this one building, yeah. and mm -hmm. Barry's thrilled, and yes. I'm sure the employees yeah. like it. It's this a beautiful facility. place. Yeah. yeah. So what else um, have I not covered about this program that you'd like to talk about? Well, you know, the thing that really um, gets me excited is, you know, the food's great. We cook, 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 and I love to cook. I love to share what I know, but, you know, I consider the students my product, my best product. Right. And so every day I'm working on, you know, their character in the kitchen, you know, their development, their grace, their communication style. So the time when we graduate them, and that's always a big event here is the graduation ceremony for each class, that I feel like I've put my love and attention and support into each one of them, and that they're off to do their best. And so I'm really proud of my product, Great. and because uh, the standards are very high. And so that's the thing that keeps me motivated to come back and do this over yeah, and over we're again. We're so glad so, you're here. I'd yeah. love you to show us yeah. your food kitchen, and then sure, we can talk absolutely. to the students. Absolutely. Okay? Thank yeah. you very you're much, welcome. Jamie. I really Thanks, appreciate this. Okay. We're at the uh, food bank here at Capstone, and uh, the chef is explaining what uh, Susie is doing. So actually, this is the food shelf of Capstone Community Action. A lot of people do that. They confuse the food bank and the food shelf. Oh, okay. The food Sorry. bank sponsors Community Kitchen Academy, and they donate food to the food shelf right. here. 
So food shelves really are different because they're where clients come to get food. The food bank really does mostly distribution right. and, and warehousing. Right. So that's really, you know, I'm, I'm glad to describe that because a lot of yeah. people it's kind of mix up the terminology. The right. Bank, yeah. It is. It so is. It's a that. big place with trucks coming and going. Yeah. Here we have people coming and going and getting food. So this is the side of things where the Community Kitchen Academy packages the food that's ready to go into distribution. So we've got Susie back here packing up some chili mac that the students made yesterday. And we have lots of different means to package food, uh, cryovac, bags, heat sealing. Um, we put labels on them, just like a store would have with the expiration date and ingredients. The only thing our food doesn't have on it is a price tag okay. and a barcode. And code. calories. And calories. I like that right? one. <laughs> and no what's going to happen, this food's going to go directly into our, walk, our reach and refrigerators over here, or if it's baked goods, it goes onto the shelf. And this is the side of things where the clients of Capstone that use the resources of the food shelf will come and Great. get groceries, dry goods, and our prepared food. Okay. So I'm going to spend some time talking to Susie Ford, who is a recent graduate of this program and is now up for a job as Chef Jamie's assistant. Yeah. I'll fight you for the job, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll win. <laughs> I think you will. Um, tell us what you found um, fascinating about the program and, and why you entered it. What was your experience? Um, I entered it because I needed a new direction. And I've always loved food, and I've always loved being in the kitchen, so it just seemed like that was the thing that Great. I should do. So I came in, and I met Chef Jamie and Chef Dave, and they were amazing, and maybe one of the best things I ever did was sign up for, for the, you. yeah. And now to be able to work here. Oh my God, it's just perfect. That's uh, great. Uh, before we graduated, um, me and a couple of my classmates said if we could just stay here forever and get paid to do what we've been doing, right. it would be the perfect job. And then this came around, and yeah, perfect. It must be a great feeling to be able to help people like yourself who yes. needed a new yeah. direction. And yep, and I'm still a client of the food shelf. I still go through um, and get food. I still financially qualify to go great. through the food shelf. So I'm here and I'm there. And I like that. To me, this is the best kept secret ever. How did you yeah. find out about this program? Did somebody steer you in this direction? Um, I had heard about it when I lived in New Hampshire. And then we moved up here, and I saw a flyer for it at the Reach Up office. Oh, OK. Right. And that was I right. looked into it, and it, yeah. Well, I think I would recommend it to anybody who's uh, struggling, I looking would. for a new direction, and yep. wants a pretty solid job, because the food industry we just talked before, um, one of the students said that maybe she'd take this experience and become a food inspector, so you don't necessarily yes. have to be a chef. Right. You can take your knowledge and use it in other jobs. Yep, there's all kinds of different things, yeah, whatever's interesting about that. to you. That's mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. taking the time. Thank you. This is Lauren, and Lauren was given the task the, today of making challah bread. And Lauren, what do you think about this program, and, and how did you get to come here? Uh, I think it's great, Pat. Um, I got to come here because I just wanted to further myself in uh, in culinary art and culinary science, and uh, just figure out what it takes to mean to make great food. That's great. Good for you. And do you have visions in the future of where you might like to work? What kind of atmosphere? Um, I like to work in a nice, friendly atmosphere, lots of teamwork. Um, I'd like to open my own restaurant one day. Whoa, good for you. Uh, we were just talking to Chef Jamie. I read a book that was written by one of the famous chefs in New York, and it was called Yes, Chef, and he was talking about how disciplined um, uh, backstage is in, in restaurants with chefs. Some of them can be pretty demanding. Have you talked about the atmosphere in, in some of these uh, kitchens? Uh, yeah, well, every kitchen is different. Every team is different. but. We all have to mesh together like a fine-tuned machine, Pat, and I think uh, I think we're trying our very best to do that. Good for you. Jamie said it's Yes Chef, right? Yes Chef. Yes Chef. <laughs> Good for you. I wish you a lot of luck. Very nice. Thank you for talking to us. We're moving over and talking to Dylan because he's working with one of my favorite food groups, Bacon. What are you making? Um, I am making a braised cabbage with bacon. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm slicing the bacon up into just little pieces. I'm going to put it in this big skillet here, and it's going to cook just till about crisp. I'm going to add some onions in, and later on, I'm going to add, after I cut up six cabbages, I'm going to add that all together, and it's just going to cook and uh, with a little bit of garlic, which, you know, yeah. always adds flavor, and some mustard seeds that come out really good. Great. Good for you. And why did you want to come here to the community kitchen? Well, honestly, um, I've, I've tried a lot of different things in my life, but, I, you know, at one point I wanted to be a mechanic, and most of my high school and 
right after high school, I've been doing shows and singing and acting and a lot of that. So I spent some time in New York City. That didn't work out. Um, too expensive. But, um, I uh, saw the opportunity here to uh, learn how to cook and to do it professionally and hopefully make a career out of it. So I took the opportunity, and I'm actually really, really enjoying it. You look like you're enjoying it. you got a big uh, smile on your face. That's great. Lot, so. And so where do you envision yourself being in a couple of years? Honestly, you know, I, 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 I've had a couple of different options. I mean, I've, I've always wanted to open up my own little, like, cafe or something like that where yes. I could just make a bunch of snacks and make one of my favorite things, which is coffee and, you know, sandwiches and things like that. So I've always just wanted a very, you know, just a, a good environment like that, a nice quiet Independent. place. Independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Thank you very much, Dylan. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, we're here at the food shelf at Capstone. And Jessica's going to explain what kind of produce are available. Hi. We have bunches of produce from cabbage, corn, peaches, apples, probably anything you can think of for produce. Um, we have lots of bread. We carry canned foods, cereals, milk, eggs, pretty much anything you can think of. That's great. And what are the hours that you're open for people to, to – they can just come in, right? Yep. Yeah. They can come in uh, twice a month or every day for – bread and veggies. Great. Um, we're open 9 to noon, and then we close for an hour, and we're open back up 1 to 3. Great. Exactly. Very nice. Thank you for volunteering. This is great. Merit. Hi. We know each other. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do, for quite a few years. And you volunteer here? Yes. That's great. Why do you volunteer? Um, just to um, help with my benefits and um, help raise my son. That's, oh, great. Oh, so they've asked you to do some community service mm -hmm. when you pick the... Uh, food show. Yes. That's a good thing to do. Yes. Nice to see you again. Nice. Just want to thank Chef Jamie and all of her students for um, having us here today. I know you've learned a lot about the community cooking school um, and I want to thank you for um, watching Vote for Vermont. Coming up we have Representative Ann Donahue is going to talk about the mental health hospital in Berlin and Meredith Anglin who is an energy policy uh, analyst and will be talking about Life After Vermont Yankee, that will be an interesting show. And we also have the Vermont Food Bank, which I know you will love. And a special guest coming up in a couple of weeks is Shauna Litsky. You all will remember her from WCAX. She did sports announcing for them, but is now the uh, partner in Vermont Brownie Company. A lot of exciting news for Shauna about how to start a small business and um, what's happening with, in her life these days. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week.